Bonjour, Hello and welcome to the France 4 interview. Our guest today is Mustafa Mohamed Abdel Jalil, the president of the Libyan National Transition Council. He's the head of the Libyan rebellion. First of all, his profile. He's 59 years old. For four years, he was the minister of justice of Colonel Gaddafi. But that was his past life, and since the end of February, only a few days after the beginning of the rebellion, Mr. Abdel Jalil uh, defected and he joined the rebel forces, and he is now the political face of the rebellion. Mr. Abdel Jalil is currently visiting European countries, friendly countries, Italy and France in particular. France, he has asked France for humanitarian and military support. And today, we're in a situation, Mr. Abdel Jalil, of gridlock. Barack Obama has called, has used the word gridlock, gridlock, and Mr. Juppé has talked about being bogged down. So we're bogged down in Libya. The rebels have proved day after day that in spite of the strikes, the airstrikes by NATO, they're not gaining ground militarily. So everybody is wondering, how do you see the outcome of this conflict? Hello. First of all, the rebellion is moving forward little by little. We were lacking weaponry. We were able to obtain some weaponry with the support of allies. We consider those efforts to support this revolution through uh, very strong uh, strikes on military sites and troop locations. Sometimes the forces of Algeria and Niger uh, and other French-speaking countries have been involved, and France can play a role in that respect. The rebels, on their end, if they're able to have uh, weaponry, will move forward much more quickly. We have courage. We are lacking in weaponry. Can you confirm that you have started to receive deliveries of weapons? Certainly, yes, but not enough. From which country, which country is delivering weapons to you today? We actually purchased some uh, weaponry and we also were given weaponry by some um, allies. Some friends, could you tell us a bit more about this? I'm not at liberty to say that for the moment. I can only say that they are friends. They did help us out by uh, giving us some weaponry. And we were able to buy other items of weaponry on our end through Libyan agents. Some people have said that Qatar has delivered, among other things, weapons to you. Yes. The position of Qatar is a historical uh, position on, on the part of the Arab countries, and other Arab countries have supported us as well. All Arab countries have supported us and supported by supporting the UN resolution that was supported globally by the Gulf Cooperation Council and the Arab League. And so far as weaponry is concerned, the role of Qatar is quite limited. Today, what do you need the most? What have you asked your allies to supply you with, the Italians and the French? What are you asking the international community to, to supply you with? We are simply requesting that the UN resolutions uh, 70 and 73 be respected and enforced. The purpose of these resolutions was to uh, instruct Gaddafi to stop uh, his aggression, to bring about a ceasefire and to protect the, civ protect the civilian populations in Misrata and the western regions. And the Libyan people have to be provided an opportunity uh, so that they can express themselves and meet their aspirations. Gaddafi's brigades are still there. And so all we did was um, ask that the uh, two UN resolutions be enforced. For the first time, rebel voices in Misrata are asking for the intervention of ground troops from abroad. The UN resolution is intended to protect the civilian population and to adopt all necessary measures to do so. And we respect the uh, international legitimacy. So today, 
Are you supporting your colleagues in Misrata who are calling for a ground intervention of foreign troops, or are you sticking to the line of the Libyan uh, National Transitional Council, which has said no ground troops from abroad involved in Libya? No. At the Libyan National Transition Council, we represent the Libyan people. We are not independent of that people. We ask the same thing the people are asking. You say that you represent the people. For the moment, you haven't been elected, you have been chosen by nobody. To what extent and in, for how long do you think you will benefit from the support of the Libyan people, that the part of the Libya that you say is, has been liberated? We represent the liberated uh, parts of the government. We are at Misrata, and our council is comprised of 30 members. Currently, there are other seats which uh, are for other areas which are not yet liberated. And there are other regions and other members from the south and from the west, but we are not at liberty to reveal their names at this point for uh, reasons of their own personal safety. What is the way out of this conflict, in your opinion? Some people are talking about uh, a gri gridlock. Do you think there will be a military solution to this conflict? Or, as several countries have said, it will have to be solved politically? If so, how do you uh, intend to go about doing this? We welcome any solution, whether it be political or military in nature, so long as it is, uh, if it brings about the departure of Gaddafi without uh, provoking a bloodbath. We want to stop the bloodshed. We do not wish uh, Gaddafi's death. We are not calling for him to be assassinated. The only thing we want is his departure in any way possible, whether it be military or political in nature. But the victory, we are certain of that. Libya will never accept that Gaddafi and his sons shall stay. This dictator will no longer be accepted in Libya. Your objective is very clear, the departure of Muammar Gaddafi, but you're the head of the rebellion, so you must be wondering how you're going to achieve that objective. Do you think you will succeed in getting sufficient uh, military advantage to force uh, uh, Muammar Gaddafi to step down, but you recently said he would only leave by force, or do you think you will have to negotiate with him one way or another? First of all, with the will of God, we are sure that Gaddafi will be deposed sooner or later. But we really want to this, this to happen as soon as possible to stop bloodshed. The longer he stays, the more blood will be shed. We want this to be a balanced situation, and we hope that there will be important airstrikes on the part of the coalition. Subsequently, the Libyans will be able to reach a peaceful solution. So, for the moment, you're totally dependent on the military intervention of the coalition to force uh, Colonel Gaddafi to step down. In fact, the revolution started uh, by our young people via peaceful demonstrations. The young Libyans demonstrated pacifically, peacefully and they were confronted by military forces. Thanks to the, uh, the will of God and the help of the coalition forces, thanks to that intervention, a, massac a massacre was avoided in Benghazi. The international airstrikes and the air exclusion zone participated in protecting the civilian population and the success of the revolution. The process is, in effect, very long. There are tactics involved. But what the coalition has done is very important for us, and whether it be the US, Great Britain, France, Italy, 
as well as all of the Arab countries, and we're extremely recognizant of all, to all those countries. Today, do you consider yourself as the head of a rebellion or the head of state? I consider that I am the president of a revolution. Insofar as the president of a government, the people will elect a new president. One last question, Mr. Abdel Jalil. If Colonel Gaddafi is listening, you were his, had been his minister, you know him, you worked with him for years. What message would you like to convey to him? I have no particular message to him or his sons. The only thing I have to say is, is that they must leave Libya in order to avoid a bloodbath. They have to seek a peaceful solution. It's in their own interest. We have no intention to kill them. But if they stay in power, this, it will be difficult for them. Mr. Mustafa Abdel Jali, thank you very much for having given us this interview on France 24. Thank you, viewers, for having watched the program. Stay with us on France 24. Thank you to France 24 for your extensive reporting on this revolution. I'd like to thank the whole team at France 24. We thank you.